Hi everybody, it's Omega Fella here. Today we are going to go over something that is a very big hot topic and it's a hot topic all the time. But I wanted to go into a bit of depth on my thought process here. What we're going to talk about today is Batman's no-kill rule. The very, very interesting no-kill rule. Now, after reading over the first couple of issues of Detective Comics that contain Batman in it, as you will see, there is a number of times that he actually kills. Within the first um, three issues, I think in 27 he kills... Um, in 28 it is believed that he kills like it's actually pretty violent it's pretty bad um, it, it turns out then in 29 that he didn't kill that person but he does kill that person's henchman by kicking him right in the neck and he snaps his neck and says that one is um, I'm just gonna it's, it's like whoa okay all right fair enough um, the one before that where he was believed to have killed someone is he set his lab on fire and let him burn inside in the building um, and this is only Detective Comics. I haven't even gotten to Batman number one where apparently he mows down a load of people with a machine gun. So here we are. Now what actually happened at the time was, and this is an excerpt from Bob Kane's autobiography, and it states, We had our first brush with censorship. Censors we had our first brush with censorship over Batman's use of a gun in Batman number one. Now in this issue, as I said, he uses a machine gun on the bat plane. Um, after this, Bill was told, never let Batman carry a gun again. The editors thought that making a murderer uh, would taint Batman's character and sales would suffer. The rule actually applies to all DC heroes uh, from the DC editorial. And what it actually says is, heroes should never kill a villain regardless of the depth of the villainy. The villain, if he is to die should do so as the result of his own machinations. Which is fair. I get that. That's fair. Um, the first no-kill rule policy actually doesn't come up in the Batman mythos until he explains it to Robin. This was an easy way to introduce the rule, but let's dig a little deeper on what that entailed. His entire obsession is based on a need to punish the guilty and to be the shining paragon of justice or when the occasion calls for it. Uh, him to portray a playboy billionaire who flies around in a bat suit violently beating up the mentally ill. And here's that argument. Should he be rehabilitating these villains to the best of his ability? Yes, he should. But as seen throughout runs in comics, cartoons and movies, that's not to be trusted. The villain is the villain because they need to be. It's plot, it's story, it's what makes Batman who he is. Constantly having to fight these criminals. Without the no-kill rule, Joker wouldn't return and kill Jason. Stories like Under the Red Hood, The Dark Knight Returns and almost all of his main character arc depends on these anti-Batmans. Now, let's look at the rule itself from a legal aspect. If you really want an explanation as to why he doesn't kill, it's two parts. One, plot device and censorship. Two, it is his rule he needs to instill in Robin, in himself, and in the law. The point is to not be the killer, to not have another eight-year-old boy's mother or father taken away from them so violently. He instills it in Robin so he can be better than him. He instills it in Gotham because he wants the public to trust in him. His rule isn't just about being better than the bad guy, it's about being seen to be better than the bad guy. Now let's look at the word itself. Kill. Batman shouldn't kill. Uh, well, he does. He, he has in almost every adaptation, by proxy, directly, or by what I like to call being means. Aliens, monsters, you know, other dimensional beings, etc. Being means anything non-human. Batman has never had a problem killing. That's why in BVS he was willing to kill Superman. He was trying to justify this in his own head that he was an alien. He says it. You were never a man. This isn't about toxic masculinity. It's about him coming to terms with his actions he's about to take. Now, this is the important bit. What are those actions? 
murder. Not killing, but murder. He was willing to stab Clark in cold blood until stopped by the thoughts of his mother. The thoughts that this alien isn't just an alien, but a man, a boy, with a mother and a family. He realises in that moment that Superman is human and that he has become the villain. He has become the terror he seeks to snap out. That's why, to me, the justification five minutes later of him taking out the goons is there. The rule has developed in this scene. It has become not killing to killing for the greater good, and especially by proxy. That's why, again, it develops in Zack Snyder's Justice League. As he is blowing parademons away with a gun, it's almost like a slow build-up to the Batman on screen and to the audience when coming to terms uh, with these instances, it's justified. It may not be okay or seen as to be okay, but it's at least good. It's righteous. And then this leads me back now to the comics. The first time he explains the no kill rule to Jason. It's not what he says. He actually doesn't say kill. What he actually says is, I'm not a murderer, son. Murder is the line we must not cross. Robin replies, you've killed before. And then Batman replies, in self-defense. Let's not lie. One of the main defining factors about Batman is the rule no matter how sadistic and evil the villain can be he never crosses that line why well that gets explained batman believes if i do that if i allow myself to go down into that place i'll never come back and some could argue here that's exactly what would happen flashpoint shows it with thomas injustice shows it with superman when the hero crosses that line, they become the villain. He will completely lose himself. And if he uses this rule as a sanity check, he knows he shouldn't kill. Most of the moments this comes up, however, the question is posed to him directly. For example, why didn't you kill him? In Jason's reference to the Joker. Then this changes the law surrounding this moral dilemma. It's no longer about killing in self-defense by proxy or by collateral damage. It has now become premeditated, switching from kill to murder. When he has to contemplate the action, it no longer applies as killing. So by this standard, the rule still applies by him saying no, I can't cross that line. He isn't talking about killing. He is referring to premeditated murder. Finalization of the problems in Bruce's life are non-existent. And he has come to terms with that. But still won't cross that line out of morals. Morals that comic readers may have misinterpreted this whole time. It may not seem logical to keeping those cycles alive, but when you look at the moral dilemma, it adds that extra layer to the mythos. I, for one, like the rule, but as I explained, I interpret it differently. So let's ask the question again. Should Batman murder.